This is Distant Replay, the podcast that goes back in time to relive all the greatest events that we witnessed in sports. From upsets, to championships, to cultural moments, we discuss it all. Coming up on today's episode. The two fighters touch gloves as the fight is ready to begin. Cassius Clay of the United States comes out in the light trunks. Yet Krakowski of Poland is in dark. Taking you back to August 18th, 1960, going to Rome, Italy for the Olympics. We're sticking with our Olympics coverage, and we're going back to the old Cassius Clay fight. Gold medal in those 1960 Olympics over at Ziggy Petrakowski. Mike, this is a this was a fun one to go back to. I, you know, we, we've already done a Muhammad Ali fight once already on the show, but I really enjoyed going back to this prior to the, the name change and back when he was an amateur, and then going back 60 years to see how boxing was was handled in the Olympics. Yeah, not only does he have a different name in this fight, but I think his fighting style is different. A much younger Cassius Clay in this boxing match. And it's just great to go back and watch because it's always good seeing a legend, you know, before maybe they're a household name. And that's what we got in this fight. Yeah, well, he was a legend, and this fight was was a really good one. And I'm I was surprised that this was actually on YouTube, we could find it, which we're going to have it up on our website, distantreplaypodcast.com, so you can watch it yourself. The fight literally takes 10 minutes, and it was a decision. So just to give you an idea of how short the fight was even back then, but it'll be on our website, but you can also find us on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe there. Hit the like button on this video. Leave us a comment. Give us a suggestion, recommendation on events, true crime you want us to go back to, and then also Twitter and Instagram. So, Mike, when I found this video, first of all, I was shocked that it had Almost uh, 1.5 million views. Yeah, people. I mean, remember, Muhammad Ali, Cassius Clay, later Muhammad Ali. I'm going to make that mistake a million times during this podcast, but he's a world icon, you know? So th- those numbers are reflective of probably searches from around the world that are just interested in any Cassius Clay, Muhammad Ali content they can get. And you know what? I'm probably surprised because this isn't a fight that is like a well known fl- fight. Right. When I sent you, hey, here's a here's a link to Clay and Petrakowski, you're like, What is this from? Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's one of those things and then you think about it, you're like, ah, oh, Ziggy Petrakowski probably has something to do with the Olympics. And then uh yeah. So yeah, it was it, it's not a fight that stands out when you think of Muhammad Ali because he had so many memorable ones, but it was a huge part in his career. Was a huge part in his career. And we'll take you through it, some thoughts on this fight. We got a lot of thoughts on this this matchup itself, but just a quick note. So this this video that we're going to put on our website is the actual footage of the fight. But I, I saw the copyright on the very first frame of the video was 1978. So it's, it seems like somebody went back and just voiced the fight, kind of narrated the fight after the fact. So this isn't the actual commentary that happened during the fight. I don't even know if they had it. This might just be video footage with no announcers. That That's the way it was either broadcast or recorded back then. But just so you know, it's not exactly the, the same broadcast from that time, although the footage is. Yeah, you'll recognize kind of the narration in this video, kind of like when you see very old highlights. Like you see an old highlight of Joe DiMaggio, like Joe DiMaggio with the double to right center field. And then like they'll show Joe DiMaggio hitting the ball. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Very kind of dramatic. And that's what you notice. So, yeah, I agree. Definitely kind of uh, narrated after the fact. Now, Ziggy Petrakowski, this was the light heavyweight division of the 1960 Olympics. Ziggy was a guy that had a ton of success in Europe. Now, I, did, I, I knew nothing about – did you know anything about Ziggy? I knew nothing about him. I, admittedly, I am not up on late 1950s <laughs> European amateur boxing history. <laughs> I, we, I know we're a history, we're a sports history podcast, and maybe that's, a, maybe that's a, a mark against me here, but you know, I just want to be honest with the audience. Well, he won the European Amateur Championship in 55, 57, 59, 63. Won gold medals in all four of those. So he's got a lot of success. He also, in the 56 Olympics in Melbourne, he won bronze in the light middleweight. So this guy was a good boxer. And, you know, just some interesting things about him. They talked on this fight, this narration, that he had over 200 amateur fights to this point. I was shocked at that number. Is that, I mean, is that common in boxing to have this many amateur fights? So when they said that, I said, oh, wow, I wonder how many Ali had, right? Ali had over 100 amateur fights also. 
Right. Yeah, they said it right afterwards. They had like 150 up to this point. And 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 they and like keep in mind, this is this is Ali when he's 18 years old. And he had been fighting since he was 12. At 18 years old, he had already had over 100 amateur fights. That to me is is astonishing. Yeah, remember we're talking 1960 here. So um Ali wouldn't fight Sonny Liston for his first heavyweight championship until like 1964. So this is a very young Ali, and you're good to point out, Ben, his amateur career starting when he's 12, 13 years old, yeah. which is crazy to think about. It is. So that's the first thing about Ziggy. He, he'd been fighting a lot and had a ton of success. He's also a southpaw, which they point out gave a lot of people trouble because they just kind of were used to that style of fighting. He's a very good defensive fighter. Little known fact, um, Rocky loosely based on Ziggy Petrakowski. What? No, I'm joking. I okay. said he's a southpaw. I said he's a southpaw. I was, was going to say. Two, two, you most well known, <laughs> two most well-known southpaws, Rocky and Ziggy Petrakowski. <laughs> yeah, probably. I mean, I, I, can't, I can't name any more off the top of my head. Um, now, listen, this is interesting, too. He, um, in his career, fought 350 fight, fights total, Ziggy. He won 334 of them. Only lost wow. 14 fights of the course of his career, drew two of them. So, Ziggy was a was a uh, really really decorated amateur boxer, although you probably never heard about him. Yeah, that's that that's why that's a wild record. Those like that's like remember that time we looked up a while ago we looked up the stats of old Hoss Radborn, that old pitcher. Yeah, when his stats could sort of pop out at you at, on Baseball Reference, those old pitchers. That this is like another example of that from a boxing perspective to have three hundred fifty decisions in your career. I know, I know, I know. It's nuts, and and. You know, you look at, at at Ali. So he he on all those fights, and I think they I think the number was around one thirty amateur fights again in six years. Hundred hundred and thirty amateur fights. So so Mike, just doing the quick math, that's like twenty fights a year. I yeah, mean, twenty fights, almost two fights a month. Right. I, that that to me, I I I had, I had no idea these guys fought at that that frequency even back then. And he had one loss at that point. But Ali actually fought that guy in this Olympics and beat him in the semifinals to get to this gold medal match. So that was the only loss he had. He avenged it, and here he was in this uh, this gold medal match. And I think he was you – know, you don't really get a true sense of it in this broadcast, but everybody kind of knew how, how special Clay was at the time, right? I mean, not probably not knowing exactly what he'd become, but – he was still uh, known at that point, and people were were really looking forward to seeing him. He had he had a, a different style, a lot more electric than maybe what they're accustomed to. Yeah, even his style in this fight is a little bit different than I think the style he would become known for, especially as he got a little bit later, middle later of his career. But you know, still Muhammad Ali, he's still shuffling in the ring at one point in this in this bout. So you felt like you were, even though you were watching Cassius Clay, you know, you, you saw shades of Muhammad Ali. Now with this fight gets underway. I got to be honest. I don't I don't think I expected a whole lot out of Ziggy in this fight. Now again, I watched this before I even went back and learned about him, so maybe if I knew how decorated he was beforehand, I probably would have expected a pretty good fight. But I think I went into it going, you know, there's there's really there's always really good fighters at the Olympics in boxing, especially guys that are kind of very early in their career that later, you know, develop and have really good pro careers. So, you know, it's not surprising to see really good player uh, fighters here. But I just didn't think he'd put up much of a fight. I'm thinking Ziggy Petrakowski, right, in the in this in nineteen sixty, the style's pretty different. Clay, just much more athletic, quick. I just thought it wouldn't be much of a fight at all. But I will be honest, as soon as the fight started, you know, Ziggy put up a pretty nice fight and got in some pretty nice combinations. Yeah, he was not a pushover, let's put it that way. No. And uh it, one of those things where Ali was, I think, in my opinion, was clearly ahead the whole bout. And it was only a three-round bout, by the way. So, right, it was three rounds, wasn't it? Yeah, that's it. The Olympics are on to something with that. Uh, I'm not, admittedly, I'm not 100% sure if that's how they still do things. But I like the three rounds really quick. But um, it, it wasn't, it was that Muhammad Ali, uh, Cassius Clay did it again. Cassius Clay was definitely ahead the whole bout, but Ziggy's putting up a fight. You know, it's, it's not a foregone conclusion that, you know, Ziggy couldn't catch Cassius Clay with a right and knock him out. You know, he's competitive. Yeah, and and, and I guess too the footage, I couldn't exactly tell how many how many punches that Ziggy was landing because it did seem like Muhammad. We know his style and how quick he is and how difficult he is actually to make contact with. Although it looked like he was fighting pretty well, I don't know how actually how many of those those punches he was actually landing because it looked like that he was probably missing quite a few. Yeah, we're not getting a Jim Lampley in between round uh, update on punches thrown and punches landed here. So <laughs> no, that probably, probably goes without saying, but we're not. We're not at all. 
what else about this fight, Mike? I mean, as you mentioned, like there's not a lot to break down with a three a three round fight that there's no knockdowns. Um, there's some pretty good punches thrown. You kind of get like a, just a small taste of what Clay would become and kind of what this fight maybe could have been if it was ten rounds. I think it'd have been a really good fight. They really did slug it out quite a bit and were aggressive, maybe more aggressive because it was such a short fight. But you know, when you look at it, not surprising Clay won, but you know, it was I guess fairly close. Yeah, f- fairly close for sure. I mean, it's again, it's 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 one of those things where um, you kind of know Ali's going to win, so you're looking at it from that lens. I didn't think it, they sort of were mentioning it later in the third round. It it was a decision technically, but not much of a decision. And you could just say see the way Ali was sort of fighting at the last half of the third round that he knew he had won it. Yeah, he had. What did you think about the numbers that were on their back, like the, I guess the competitor numbers for the Olympics? I got a great, very recent story about this. You ready? Mm-hmm. So what Ben's talking about is they each had numbers on the like pinned to the back of their, like a um, marathon runner kind of like a marathon runner exactly. And first of all, unique in a boxing match that they're wearing shirts. First of all, they're wearing like tank tops, which you see a lot from the Olympics throughout the years. But that's something unique if you've never seen it. Now these numbers pinned to the back. So yesterday, my daughter went to try out for a team, and there was probably forty kids there. So they need to be able to identify the kids. So at the last minute, anyone who has a kid will appreciate this. I got my eight-year-old at a field, 100 degrees out, last minute, hey, here's your number. Pin it to your daughter's back. <laughs> I'm fumbling around with a coffee in my hand, pinning it on my daughter's back. Her saying, oh, it's, it's flapping up and hitting me in the back of the head because <laughs> it was windy too. Whole disaster with those things. Right. So when I saw those things and like happened in this fight, Ziggy's ripped during the middle of the fight. Like three of the kids that had these on last night, they ripped during the you know they ripped during the tryouts. The kids are running over to their parents to get it adjusted. Those things are a nightmare. <laughs> they look like a nightmare. Uh, and and one of them, I guess it was I think Ziggy's was like was falling off. It was hanging on by one pin, just kind of dangling behind him. I'm not sure what, what what's the point of having those on there during a fight like that. We don't know who these guys are in the gold medal match. E- e- very <laughs> odd. It almost seems like hey, we have it for every other event, so we're gonna have it for boxing too. Like no thought put into it. No thought at all. Um, what else, Mike? I mean, overall, this was a kind of a cool fight to go back to 60 years later and just kind of watch one of Clay's very early fights, this gold medal, his first gold medal here. And, his, and um, you know, pretty special, I guess, and step and in, in kind of milestone in his career and learned a lot about Ziggy, who who passed away in 2014 at 79 and Muhammad Ali um, would pass away a couple of years after him in 2016. Yeah. Hey, is it normal, Ben? To have the medal stand in the ring, I think they, I think they do that for boxing. I don't know if they still okay. do, but I think, pretty I, cool. I think I've seen that before. Pretty cool, man. It's like, hey, I just won a gold medal. I'm in the ring. I'm the alpha here, and I'm on the the gold medal podium. Like, come at me, you know? Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty yeah. cool scene. It was. Um, cool. Yeah, and then um, yeah, I just thought it was good to see some of like the Muhammad Ali personality come out in a young Cassius Clay. You know, yeah. like when he's shuffling in the ring and sort of. Very few people can show personality while they're in the middle of actually performing their athletic acts. You know what I mean? You have to be really good to be able to do that, right? And have the presence of yeah. mind to be able to do it. And, you know, we see glimpses of that here of what was to come. We did. And if you haven't, Mike, go to um, Wiki- the Wikipedia page for Muhammad Ali, or sorry, Ziggy. And you, the, the picture they have, like, you know, they always have a picture of the, of the boxer, then probably a moment from his career. They actually have a, a picture from that 1960 fight, the the referee holding up Muhammad Ali's arm. Now, a couple of things. You kind of see the outfits, as you mentioned, which Ziggy also had some very tight shorts on, which is, was shocking. But yeah, I was yeah. actually really surprised at how much blood was on Ziggy's shirt. Blood, I'm looking at it now. So first of all, this is picture to show you how much of an, a big moment this was in Ali's career and Cassius Clay's career. This picture is also on Ali's uh, Wikipedia. Okay. But, so this, this picture, Ziggy has blood all over him. The referee has like a milkman outfit on yeah. all white outfit with a bow tie <laughs> and then you have ali with his hand raised and i don't know if ziggy is saying something to the referee yeah like hey you did a bad job or whatever i think he might be reaching out for a handshake maybe yeah reaching out for a handshake and the ref is like uh you're bloody and you smell <laughs> <laughs> like he does just, look just like got a... done with a boxing match <laughs> he, I, i'm i'm just surprised at how beat up he looks I, I, I mean i know he took some shots but he looks like he got worked over pretty good yeah, yeah. And again, he has a shirt on, so the blood is even more pronounced. Right, exactly. All right, Mike, we'll close it out on that. I've actually enjoyed this one. This was fun to go back to. Um, 
I like these really old fights and old events because we, we just things are so different than they are uh, even when we go back 20 years, right? So pretty cool. We're going to put this on our website again, just at replaypodcast.com. You'll find it there. Find it on YouTube. We'll put this episode up on YouTube as well. And subscribe, follow us wherever you listen to podcasts. And then please like us on um, Twitter, Instagram as well. We'd appreciate that. Absolutely. Uh, you guys like subscribing. It really helps us with the podcast is growing. Can't thank you enough. And until next time. Thank you.